What's up, guys? It's Prince Donnell, founder of Jumping Jack Tax and the Jack franchise. And today we're going to be talking about the five bank accounts that you should set up when launching your business, your LLC. These are the five bank accounts that I recommend. Just my opinion, by the way. Um, but I think it has a, uh, a great way to give you the organization that you need for your business and also allows you the opportunity to scale. So I'm excited to have to, to talk about that today on this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe if you love this video, if it provided you with valuable information, and also recommend this to a friend, to another uh, new entrepreneur or business owner so that they can be on the right track when it comes to their finances. Let's get into it. First things first, I think it's very important to understand that as soon as you establish your LLC, you need to set up separate bank accounts immediately away from your personal accounts. This is very important because we have so many clients that come into our office and we ask them, are you running business transactions through your personal account or are you running personal transactions through your business account and they're mixing the two? That is a means for disaster. And if you're watching this video, I know you did it a few times because in the past I've done it. Look, I get it. Sometimes it's easy to do and it's, it's like it's out of sight, out of mind. But I can tell you now it's going to lead to problems in the future. Some of those problems could be the fact that you're not going to be able to trace back transactions that you've made that that could that could actually be tax deductions um, that could be write offs. And you can't even trace it back anymore because you ran them out of accounts that you shouldn't have. Secondly, um, what happens if you're audited by the IRS and they see that your books are a mess? That's going to that's going to now give them a feeding ground to keep looking further into your books to find mistakes. Right. The IRS tends to not mess around with people who are more organized, who have who have more who have cleaner books, who are being represented by a tax professional, by an accountant. Right. They, they tend to not mess with those individuals because they know it's going to be harder to find things. But it's easy when they can find somebody like yourself who is not organized. They know you don't know what you're doing. You don't know tax law. Your books are a mess. Man, I can promise you, you're going to be paying thousands of thousands of thousands of dollars. Please don't do it to yourself. Set up separate accounts. And I need you to make this a rule. The rule is I will only run business transactions out of my business account and I will keep everything personal. And if I need money from my business account to do personal things, then if I have a single member LLC, I'm going to write a check from my business account and send it to my personal account. And if I have an S Corp, I'm going to run my self payroll. You are not to run your business debit card for a personal transaction. I need you to make this a rule, please, okay? Now that we have that established, let's move into the five accounts that you're gonna be setting up once you actually get your LLC established. So you're gonna go into the bank, you're gonna have all of your documents and information, and you're gonna give it to the banker, and the banker's gonna, you're gonna say, banker, I wanna open up some bank accounts. I got a few here that I want to open. By the way, you can open up as many accounts as you would like. Some banks do have minimums when it comes to opening up business bank accounts. Some do. Some might only have a $25 minimum or et cetera. Um, just do your research on the banks because if you don't have a lot of liquid cash to be able to fund each of these accounts that I'm about to explain, you don't want to get hit with unnecessary fees, bank fees, because you don't, you're not able to hit the minimum. So just do a little research in your area. Sometimes local banks are a little a little easier. Um, I will tell you that the issue though with going to a local bank is that a lot of times when you start to scale in business, if you have a local bank and they're not open at the time when you need to actually handle a business transaction, well, that could end up being a problem. So me personally, uh, I kind of like bigger banks and I like to have some money in the bigger bank, some is smaller, all depends, just, just so I'm not caught up in a situation in the future where I need money and a small local bank is not open. Okay, so the first account that you are going to set up is your operating account. This is gonna be a, a, a business checking account. It's gonna be called your operating account. I want you to label it as operating account. So tell the banker, I wanna open up a business checking. I want it to be called my operating account. This is going to be an account where you're, where you're running 
all of your bills out of and you're running most of your this is where most of the volume of your transactions are going to come from so you go to staples and you want to pay for paper pens and etc that's all coming out of your operating account this is also probably this is also the account where all your money is coming into so all your money's coming into that operating account all of the miscellaneous bills and and like your email and all of the things that you need to run the business that's all coming out of that operating account money in money out right standard account that you have. It's a checking account, okay? Very simple. Money comes into that account, all of your bills and everything comes out of that account, okay? It's your operating account. Now, let's go into the second one. Your second account that you're going to open is a reserve account, a business savings account, okay? Or it can be another checking account depending upon the fees that the banks charge because sometimes business savings account carries certain minimum. But um, you want to open up a, uh, a reserve account. What is this reserve account used for? This reserve bank account is when at the end of each week or at the end of each month, depending upon your cycle and how much cash flow you have coming in, at the end of that month, you should be doing a profit loss, meaning, okay, here's how much money came in, 10000 Here's how much money went out, 5000 I now have $5,000 left over in profitability. With that 5000 left over in profitability, I want you to make it a habit to where a certain percentage of that money that you have, you're putting that into a reserve reserve. Okay. For some of you, you might be able to afford to put 10%. Some of you might be able to afford to do 20, 30, 40. It all depends upon your comfortability level and the amount of overhead that you have. I don't know, but let's just say that it was, that it was 10%. So if I have $5,000, I'm going to take, if I got 5,000 in profit, I'm going to take 10% or $500, and I'm going to put that into my reserve. What is my reserve used for? That is what I consider a deep savings account, meaning that if things hit the fan, I have funds to the side that I'm able to go to in the event that another uh, crisis like the pandemic that just happened that caused a massive amount of businesses to go out of business that massive amount of businesses to fail and to go out of business have to close their doors in the event that something like that were to occur i have a deep savings i have a reserve to be able to cover me that is important because i promise you you're going to run into hard times the economy is going to turn and when it does the companies that are sitting on enough cash are going to be able to remain uh are going to remain alive the companies that don't are going to they're going to perish I don't want that for you. So have a reserve account set up, take a minimum of 10%, put that into that reserve. Never, ever, 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 ever touch those funds, ever. It's not ever to be touched unless an emergency happens and it's a catastrophe, okay? So you're gonna have your reserve account set up. That's number two, and I want you to label it as reserve. The third account that you're gonna set up is your tax account, okay? This could be another checking account, um, business checking that you set up, your tax account. Now, this is important because of the fact that now that you're a new business owner, you're, you just established your LLC. Now, on the profits that you earn, you're going to have to pay taxes on the profits, okay? Now, a lot of times, it's, 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 it's easier for you to now know how much that you're possibly going to have to pay in tax, and then you want to put that money into that tax account so that when you get the bill at the end of the year, or if you're paying your taxes quarterly, you have the funds there inside of that tax account. I have a video on YouTube to talk about how you can calculate out your actual tax bill because it, it, it depends. So I will watch that video on my YouTube. I think it's um how to pay yourself as a uh, single member LLC, or I think I have another video on um, the difference between LLC and S Corp, and I break down how to actually calculate out your taxes. I won't do that on this video, but you want that tax account set up because again, with those profits that you earn, you want to take a certain percentage of that and you want to put that into the tax account. So then if you get your tax bill, you have the ability to write the check and pay it. So now you're not at the end of the year like, damn, I got a tax bill. I can't pay it. Now you're getting hit with interest and penalties by the IRS because of the fact that you owe them money. Set up your tax account, transfer the money there. The next account that you're going to want to set up is your marketing account. This is important because I see so many new businesses that open and you don't got any money for marketing. You're never going to win if you don't got money for marketing. 
We spend thousands of thousands of thousands of thousands of dollars every single month on marketing here at Jumping Jack Tax with our franchise. Thousands of dollars. That is important because it's the only way you're going to be able to start gaining market share for you to scale. So with that profit, you're not about to spend that profit on a Rolex. You're not about to spend that profit on a new chain. You're not about to spend that profit on a car. You can't even afford that just because your business made 5000 in profit. Your business needs to be paid first. So take a certain percentage of that and you're going to be, again, a minimum of 10% or more, and you're gonna take that now, and you're gonna put that into your marketing account now. Now that marketing account at 10% has $500. Now that it got 500 bucks, now you know going into the following month, I got $500 to spend on marketing now because I took it from my profits from the previous month. And now as the business starts to generate more profitability, that 10% that you're putting toward marketing in that marketing account, it grows. Now that you made 10,000 now, you might got a th- you have $1,000 now that you have for marketing the next month. And over time, it begins to multiply where now you can have a couple thousand dollars a month spending on marketing now that, you're, that you've literally put into that particular account. OK, um, or you could use that 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 money for marketing now to hire somebody to handle your marketing for you, to be able to hire social media uh, experts, or social media managers or et cetera. You got the budget to do it. So please set up that marketing account and take a percentage of your of your profits and dump it into that marketing account so you can spend that every month. And by the way, the money that's inside of that marketing account, as long as you're spending it, it's a tax write off. So. If you put more of your profits into that marketing account, then you got then you're you, you're going to put less money into your tax account because you're actually spending the money on marketing, which is a tax write off. So now I don't got to pay taxes on those profits, right? So had that marketing account set up, and then lastly, which is one of my favorite accounts that I set up, I set up an innovation account. Again, this could be another checking account that you set up. You're going to label it as innovation. What is an innovation account? Basically, what that means is that your business should be constantly looking to develop new products or services. It should be constantly looking for ways to, 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 uh, to change the future, right? So people, customers like companies that are, that are, that are forward thinking, Okay, that are that are researching and finding new ways to change the marketplace. This is important if you want to scale. So with that innovation account that you have, you're going to take a percentage of that 10 percent minimum. Drop it into that innovation account. Now that you have the money in the innovation account, sometime throughout that year, you might say to yourself, you know what? I'm thinking of us launching a new product. I'm thinking of us launching a new uh, launching a new service that we have for our customers. But it's going to cost, let's say, three grand in order to launch this new product or launch this new service. Now you have the money in your innovation account that you've been building up over the course of months because you've been taking it from your profits and you want to do this before December 31st. First, why? Because you want to try to spend down all of the money that you have by December 31st on your business so you don't got to pay any taxes on the profits. So you take the money from the innovation account and say, now that I'm going to launch this new product or service, I have the money in my innovation account to spend. I have the funds to do. So let's let's go through this process again. You're going to have your operating account where money comes in and your regular bills come out, right? That you need to operate the business, which then now at the end of each month, you'll have you'll have a profit, a profit, right? If that profit is five grand, now you know I got five grand to work with here. Now that I got that five, I'm going to take 10% of that money. I'm going to put 10% into my reserve account and I'm never going to touch it. I'm going to act as if it doesn't exist, right? I'm going to take another percentage of that, I'm going to put it into my marketing account. Now that marketing account is what I'm going to use next month in order to finish to continue marketing my business so I can get more market share. I'm going to take another percentage of that. I'm now going to put it inside of my innovation account. I'm going to use that innovation account from here to be able to uh, find new products or services to launch into the marketplace from there. And then I'm going to take that last percentage and I'm going to put that into my tax account. Again, watch one of my previous videos to understand how to calculate the tax side of things. And from there, you'll have that in the tax account. So then you now, when you get that tax bill, you have the ability to pay it. You operate like this, that gives you more organization. It it, it allows you to know how much you have the ability to spend in each 
the vision of your company. I look at these like the vision. Innovation is the division. Marketing is a division. The tax side is a division. Your operating account is how you're moving and your cash flows. These things, right? When you look at this from a bird's eye view as a uh, as an executive, as a CEO, it gives you a clarity. So now you're not just like, I got 5,000 here and I'm about to just be throwing money that way, throw money that way, throw money that way. That's no way to run your business. Throwing money all these different places. You're going to go out of business faster than you can than you can even say we're open. You don't want to do that. Set up those accounts, create structure around the business in the very beginning when you start, and you're going to have you're going to have a better chance than about 95% of people who are going to watch this video and literally not do anything that I say, and a year from now they're going to be out of business. I promise you. I promise you. So please set those up, set up that structure, and uh, you're going to be good to go in your future. Again, like, comment, and subscribe if you like this video. Share this with another entrepreneur, a friend. Comment below. Let me know what you think about this video if you're going to use this strategy from here. And best of luck with you in your future of business. And if you need your business taxes done, then of course you can come to Jumping Jack Tax, download the Jumping Jack Tax app. You'll be able to find one of our uh, one of our uh, our tax professionals on our app, and uh, they'll be more than happy to serve you and be your uh, your uh, representative for years to come. Peace.